Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tawia Matope. Uh, on this channel, I do uh, deliver content mostly uh, aligned to social work as I'm a social worker and I find it particularly um, interesting for, you know, students, social workers and, you know, those who are already practicing and the general public who might be interested in the content that I deliver on this channel um for those who haven't subscribed please subscribe that hit that subscribe button so that um and that hit that notification bell as well so that when i post you'll be the first person to know um today i'm going to be talking to you uh, about one of the topics uh that is really dear to my heart when it comes to uh my practice with uh families and children i'm going to talk to you about the impact uh that witnessing domestic abuse has on children uh, children who witness domestic abuse in their homes. What is the impact on them? Uh, right. So before I jump into it straight away, just to let you know that in England, just slightly over 50,000 children are subject to what we call child protection plans in England alone. And uh, of those 50,000 uh, children, um, I would say about 48% of them uh, would be classified to be at risk of significant harm because of neglect and they so which means they might be witnessing domestic you know abuse or they are in on child protection plans but 40 percent of them they are you know uh, at risk of significant harm due to neglect and then about 37 percent of them um you know could uh, have been assessed to be at high risk of emotional abuse right so when it comes to the impact of, uh, you know, children witnessing domestic abuse in their households, um, you know, it, it's 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 quite sad, really, to to be to be working on such cases. But you know, it is what it is, and I think in this video you will uh, gain a few nuggets as to you know what it is that somebody can see on children who have witnessed domestic abuse in their households, how does it manifest in them or what is it that they do or what would be the impact on them? Um, all right, so let me jump into it straight away. Um, you know, in terms of uh, seeing the impact of emotional abuse firsthand on children and the devastating consequences that it might have on them, um, I would say sometimes you know it 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 puts this burden uh on the shoulders of children of, of these children for their entire lives because some of these things it affects them for the rest of their lives depending with the kind of support that they do obtain or depending with the kind of support that they get uh from whoever is working from with with them actually Right, so the first one is sometimes you might uh, see that the children are overly affectionate to strangers and there's no um, stranger danger. There's no risk of, you know, there's no risk awareness of, they're just overly affectionate to strangers, including people, you know, who are just coming into their household for the first time or you are going into this household for the first time and you see this child, there's no any stranger danger awareness at all. That could be one of the telltale signs or because they, they might see somebody coming into this property as somebody who is safe than what they are used to be to being exposed to. Sometimes such children also do lack confidence, which is really, really um, a terrible thing for children to go through. As you know, sometimes children who do lack confidence, it's easy for them to develop mental health issues as well. Uh, so sometimes they do lack close relationship or a bond with their primary care. Because they see this primary carer as somebody who has exposed them to so much in their lives. And depending with their ages, sometimes they do even like a bond with possibly both parents. Or sometimes it might be one parent, especially the perpetrator, if they are exposed to, you know, to, to, to constant incidents of domestic abuse. Or sometimes they might present as aggressive and bullies in school uh, or towards others in the playground or you know they, they would want to project what they are seeing onto other children as well um sometimes they lack the innocence of childhood and sometimes they do grow up quite too soon because they carry responsibilities on their shoulders at an early age to make sure that they fend for themselves 
or they take care of themselves. They're always in a flight of, you know, uh, they call it what, flight mode or something like that. Yeah. And uh, sometimes such children do struggle to regulate their own emotions and sometimes to control their anger. They do struggle to contain their anger sometimes. And um, sometimes they get isolated from friends and family because remember when these things are going on in the family, parents sometimes do isolate themselves from family and friends. So when parents do isolate them from family and friends, how, how are the children going to be seeing these extended family and family and friends? Sometimes they also do get isolated because of the decisions of the adults who are around them. Um, sometimes they do self-harm, depending with the age uh, that they are at. Uh, sometimes you see them soiling themselves. It's not always the case uh, that children that, you know, with, with me saying all these things that I'm telling you now right now, doesn't necessarily mean you need to take them in isolation. You need to take them in context of what is happening to that particular child. Because it doesn't necessarily mean that any child that you see who is soiling himself or any child that you see who self-harms may have witnessed, you know, domestic abuse. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to take, you know, each and every characteristic or each and every uh, factor which I'm talking about right now in context of what is happening to that particular child and in context of the age of that particular child as well. All right, so let me carry on. Some of the children do present with eating disorders. Sometimes they do have difficulties in sleeping at night, or sometimes they do have uh, irregular sleeping patterns because sometimes when they're supposed to be sleeping at night, there are disturbances. They can't sleep because of the domestic abuse which is going on at home. And then when they're supposed to be in class, concentrating in class, you know, they can't concentrate. That's when they want to be sleeping. So sometimes they'll, they'll be having some irregular sleeping patterns as well. Um, right. So um, just to mention as well, uh, there's a, the, the research which, which is done by NSPCC indicates that one in five children in England and Wales have been exposed to domestic abuse at some point in their lives. So we are talking of if you count five children, it means one of those five children at some point in their lives may have been exposed to domestic abuse. It doesn't necessarily mean all their childhood, but at some point they may have, you know, exposed to domestic abuse. With some parents, maybe they would have noticed quite early that, you know, this is not good for my child and they do separate. So it means, it, you know, they are just basically saying one in five children may have been exposed to domestic abuse at some point in their lives. Um... Right, so you will find that the immediate impact of exposure to domestic abuse on children, sometimes it includes feelings of anxiety and worry. They worry too much. Sometimes they don't even, they don't even want to go to school because they are afraid that mommy is going to be hit when she's left at home or daddy is going to be hit when, when they leave dead at home and go to school. Sometimes they do experience nightmares and sleepless nights, like I mentioned at this point already. Sometimes they lack concentration in class. I've mentioned this already. And sometimes they do struggle to focus on tasks. They might be hyperactive. So it's not always the case that children who are hyperactive, they witness domestic abuse. But sometimes it's one of those telltale signs which might tell you that as well. Or sometimes they might be having obsessive behaviors or sometimes aggressive behaviors, which I've mentioned already, uh, because they are trying to project what they've been exposed to to others and because they don't see anything bad in what they've been exposed to they just do it sometimes uh sometimes they worry about the safety of their abused parent and fear of being parted with you know they fear that you know if maybe they if, if if they're at school you know they might be taken away from their parent because remember children do hear what the adults around them also talk about when they talk about social care takes children away and all those kind of things so they just conclude in their minds that you know this might also be happening to me. However, in the long term, there are also other negative, you know, impact, uh, negative impacts that could be that could be seen on children who have been exposed to domestic abuse. It's it, the, 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 the research indicates that it's highly likely that children who have been exposed to domestic abuse are likely to abuse substances or alcohol later on in life. And they are also at an increased risk of depression, anxiety disorders later on in adulthood. And um, they might also be low achievers when it comes to school. Because remember, 
if they can't concentrate much in school while they are at primary age, chances are high that they might not necessarily grasp those concepts. And when they grow to be in secondary school, because they haven't grasped those concepts in primary school, they are likely they are less likely to enjoy those lessons in secondary school. And as a result, they might just give up on education altogether and they may not necessarily achieve as expected uh, in education or in training. So, you know, if you consider all those ways uh, that witnessing domestic abuse can damage children, it becomes clear, you know, why as social workers we do, you know, fight so hard to make sure that we protect children and... Um, we make sure that they are safeguarded from not only domestic abuse but also from emotional uh from emotional abuse because of the harm that it causes to them uh with those few nuggets i hope somebody has benefited somebody who's doing an assignment an assignment possibly has benefited and um somebody who's uh wondering how do social workers work with children or how, or how do we know the telltale signs possibly somebody has benefited if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe Hit that notification bell so that when I when I when I post uh, again, you'll be the first person to know. And thank you so much for watching.